Hi, I'm Tyler Farah, and in this video, we're going to capture the rotation of a molecule as it goes around a single bond, and we're going to do that using Newman projections. I want to start out by having you just think about all the ways that you've learned to represent molecules so far in your career in chemistry. When you first started out, you learned molecular formulas, and this was right around the same time you learned atoms, because a molecular formula is just a list of a molecule's atoms. Later on, you learned about electrons, and lone pairs, and bonding. And this is all shown in Lewis structures, which show the lone pairs and the bondings and which atoms connect to what. Later on, probably towards the end of your first year of chemistry, you learned about 3D molecular geometries, the tetrahedral geometry in this case. And this coincided with you learning a new way to represent molecules, the wedge and dash structure, which we use all the time in organic chemistry. So, my point is, each time you learn some new, groundbreaking fact about the structure of molecules, you learned a new way of drawing molecules that shows the new thing you were learning. Well, the same is going to be true for Newman projections. Newman projections are interesting not just because they show us a new way of thinking about a molecule, but because they are the best way to illustrate a brand new fact that you're going to want to consider about molecules from now on, which is that molecules don't just stay stationary. Molecules are constantly rotating, jiggling, and moving about. In fact, molecules have a great opportunity to rotate anywhere that they have a single bond. And since alkanes are made exclusively of single bonds, alkanes are really the first place where we start to think about this. Now, you're going to learn later on that actually double bonds prevent rotation. And I like to think about it like this. The best part about swinging on a tire swing is that because you have only one rope connecting you up to the tree, not only can that swing swing, but it can also spin around in a circle, and that's super fun. By contrast, a traditional swing, which has two chains connecting it up to the swing set, can't spin. So it goes for molecules. Anytime you see a single bond, you're going to want to be thinking about the fact that that single bond can rotate, that the rotation of that is going to change how the functional groups around that single bond relate to each other, and ultimately the best way to represent and draw all of this is going to be our friend, the Newman projection. So let's take a look at an example. Now, in this example, we're asked to draw a series of Newman projections. And remember, there are actually two Newman projections for each molecule. We could imagine that we're looking at it from the left or looking at the molecule from the right. In this case, we're, we're told to assume that the left carbon is going to be the one that we want to uh, have be the front carbon. So we're going to ignore that second possible Newman projection and just draw the first Newman projection for each one. What I want you to notice is that in this example, our OH group stays in the same place each molecule. In fact, the same is true of all the substituents on that left on that left carbon. However, if we look at the right carbon, my hydrogen, which started out in the top area, sticking out of the page, seems to have rotated into the position that fluorine had occupied. And furthermore, if we if we take a look at fluorine, fluorine seems to have rotated down here to where bromine used to sit. And finally, bromine itself has also rotated. All three of these guys are spinning around this axis. If you look at the next projection, you can see that this process repeats itself. Fluorine spins up, bromine spins over, and hydrogen spins down. This is a little hard to see in this wedge and dash projection, and that's the point of having Newman projections that are going to help us out. For Before we get to the Newman projections, let me show you what this would look like. So our method for Newman projections is to imagine that we are uh, a little uh, superhero version of ourselves floating here in space, and maybe you can imagine that in this case we're like holding on to this hydroxyl group so that we are... Uh, fixed relative to the front carbon, and we're looking back at how the atoms on that back carbon are spinning. And what we would see would be something like this. Those atoms on the back carbon are going to be spinning around relative to each other. And notice that as that, that, that back carbon and its functional groups spin, that changes the position of the functional groups on the front and back carbon relative to each other. And this is just going to keep spinning like this forever, because in the real world, 
uh, this molecule would constantly be spinning and wiggling and jiggling about. Um, but for this question, we're asked just to consider three special positions, and we'll see why these positions are so special in a, in a later video. But we are asked for this, uh, we'll follow bromine, I guess, this position where bromine is pointing down, and then this other position where bromine is pointing up and to the right, another position where bromine is pointing up and to the left. And I just want to point out, if we spun this one more time, we would end up right back where we started. So these three positions really are, are a, a complete trip around the circle. Now, I don't want to rely on that 3D model because, of course, we're not always going to have 3D models hanging around to help us out. But this should go pretty quick because we know that for each of these, we're going to have that front carbon. For each one of these, the substituents bound to the front carbon are going to be exactly the same because in this example, the front carbon is not the one rotating. And then if we look at that back carbon, we can just follow bromine around just like we did with the 3D model. Bromine starts out down here and then bromine moves up to the top right and then over to the top left and we can draw hydrogen rot rotating around in its three positions and fluorine as well. And we know that we've done this right because if we check our first Newman projection, we can see that bromine has moved up, hydrogen has moved over, and fluorine has moved down in our Newman projection, just as had happened in our original wedge and dash projection. These are two different views of the exact same phenomenon, and you can see it's just a little bit easier to see what's happening, to see this rotation in Newman projection format.